deep within the snowy hills of the English countryside lies a mysterious old inn, where due to budget constraints, sorted food are hosting their Christmas weekend away. Legend has it, however, that the inn has a mind of its own, and a weekend of fun may quickly turn into a weekend of survival. Today, Kush and I are going back to back, cooking up the same dish using exactly the same ingredients. The only difference is, he's a classically trained chef with over 17 years professional experience working in kitchens, many of which were Michelin starred. Whereas I, I am not. Well, how am I gonna get, oh no. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so sorry. The problem didn't start with me. The problem was already here. The brief was five identical pastries. We have five semi-identical cakes. I'm gonna give myself a three. You'll be fine, Jay. Oh, come off it, you're not Ebbers. You got some cards, mate? No, I've got the standard one card. I bet you've got one card and a stack of cards of steps that are out of order, correct? I have multiple cards. Yeah, well done. Shall I turn mine over first? Yep. <laughs> oh, no. Have you seen it? Yeah. Go on, you say it. Today we're making seafood paella. I didn't think we were allowed to do this. I didn't think I was allowed to do this. Oh, I've got all of the steps, but they're definitely not in the right order. Yeah, but you're a master. Where were you just on holiday? Valencia. Oh, where's oh. Paella from? Paella's from Valencia. There we go. So, I have no chance. I didn't have a seafood one, though, because it's not traditional. It's not, is it? I can't see a rabbit anywhere. No. <laughs> and I know there's only one Paella pan in this kitchen. What was that? Nothing. Oh, you absolute tear. <laughs> right, should we get cooking? This might take a while. Si, sí, senor. Well, you know the Spanish. Si. Sí. Sí. <laughs> no time limit, but three, two, one, allez. 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 Vamos. 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 Right, let's go. I'm going to say this now. I'm not going to make an authentic paella. I can't because I don't have a proper pan. So I'm going to use a frying pan. Nice big frying pan. Quite thin, quite cheap. This is, ooh, this is the one Ben bought in the 100 pound equipment battle. I think the base will be quite simple. Two onions, some garlic, two tomatoes, um, saffron, smoked paprika, pimenton. So usually you start by making a stock. We would want like a fish stock, but I don't want to drink it, but I don't know what stock that is. It's not a fishy stock. It's like a chicken stock. Oh, this is not the way that I would make a paella. These cards are here to help me, but I disagree with what the cards say. Dom, do I follow the cards, which I disagree with, or do I go off on my own tangent? We're doing it. Right. Are you not following the format of this video? No, the cards uh, that were there were not going to help me. Because you know better. I know better. Wait, I need the pan. The, you I know where the pans have, are? I don't have... Yeah, they're underneath you. Yeah, come and go. Oh, don't right, steal. <laughs> we're going to start by making a stock because the base of a paella I can hear Jamie stock. making a stock as well that's and the base of the a paella and the stock is the most important part so it's going to add all of the flavour into the rice so so I've got to follow his lead <laughs> onions onions there <laughs> got, got them next and uh, prawns prawns learn as we go never stop learning I'm going to roast off the shellfish get all the juice out of it put the shellfish back on at the end cut up the monkfish on this board, cook some prawns through just a touch to get the nice roasted shells, get all the flavour into it, and put the seafood in at the end, or the squid in at the end. So oil in, that's gonna help fry the rice at the bottom, at the end, to get a lovely socket at. 
the best bit, I think, anyway. Do you like a soccer app, Jamie? I do like the soccer app. I have struggled previously to get the soccer app because I stirred the rice <laughs> and got, made, made and got told off. It wasn't the only thing I've been told off for when making paella, but it is one of the things. Right, okay, good to know. Prawns, uh, get some heads into the stock. Oh, I could be doing something else instead of doing this. That would be more efficient. I need the prawn shells and the prawn heads because that's where the most flavour is going to come from. I should have done that first before I did my onion and my garlic, but it doesn't matter. We are where we are. Chop. I want to leave four whole ones for the top for garnish. Again, I'm not thinking completely straight. This should be a hot pan with oil already in it so that these are going, but that's cold at the moment. Touch more oil in this small pan, nice and hot. I'm gonna put my clams in first, because they'll take longer to cook. Put the lid on top to steam them through. Chef! Yes? You got any oil? <laughs> got any oil? Who prepped this kitchen? Who set you up? Oh, they... Okay. Spanish as well, isn't it? Monica. Spanish olive oil, Yeah, Excellent. lovely. Mussels go in with the clams. White wine in, and that'll steam through. So I've caramelised off the prawn shells, brown them a bit in lots of olive oil. I'm gonna go in with the rest of the white wine. Boil that down for about 30 seconds, add the stock, add some parsley to it, bring it to a simmer and strain it all off. Into that is gonna go all the juice from the mussels and the clams that's in here. And then that'll be my proper seafood stock for the paella. Shells just popped open like that, just open. They are not fully cooked through, but now's the time to drain them. I think we're gonna want monkfish down the middle, right, nice big chunks. So the wine is boiled down. I'm gonna go in with this stock. Just wanna get this to the boil, cook it for only five minutes. That's all you need with prawn heads. All this lovely juice in there, but with clams, especially in the UK, they've been quite sandy. So I'm gonna strain that for a bit of kitchen paper before it goes in. One of the best tools you've got at home is good quality kitchen paper. It'll act as a really fine sieve. And get rid of all that sediment, silt, sand, broken bits of shell. Lovely, some monkfish done. Onto some squid, nice few calamari rings. That's like the heady bit. I don't think we can eat that bit. Lovely, seafood prepped. We've also got clams and mussels. Let's get some onion and garlic in there. Now I'm gonna add in wine to my stock pan. That's gonna deglaze the pan. Um, and then I can add all the stock water in, bring that up to a boil, and then I'll sieve it out so that we have just a completely clean liquid. Reduce, 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 reduce. So I'm just looking to sear the outside of the fish, get a touch of color. This is monkfish, so it's a very meaty fish. Takes a bit more cooking. So I'm gonna sear it now. Take it out and then add it in when the rice goes into the pan or halfway through the rice cooking, just so it cooks through gently. I don't want to put it in from the beginning, otherwise it'll overcook. I've recollected my cards because I lost confidence. I've got some oil heating in my paella uh, and I'm going to add in my monkfish and then my squid so I can get that cooked. Uh, we'll remove that and then I've got to prep my onions and my garlic, which is going to form the base of my paella. So monkfish is seared, coming out the pan into this tray that will go back in later. Prawns are lightly coloured. Squid is going to stay in the pan and cook throughout. It's going to braise down with the rice. They'll cut it really small so it'll go tender quite quickly, so you don't have to worry about that. Next is going to be the sofrito base. I'm going to do two onions, uh, just do three cloves of garlic, get that in with the squid to make the sofrito base with a pinch of saffron and some paprika. Grate some tomatoes in, cook that as long as I can get it cooked. So nice and dark and caramelised, loads of flavour and then go in with the rice and the stock, and they're kind of done, he says. Oh, yeah. How is your pan doing? It's a bit small. It was quite I scary. think I'm going to make quite a small paella. So I've got uh, two small onions, three cloves of garlic, really finely diced. It's going to go into the pan with the squid and the olive oil. I'm going to add a touch of salt now. As we know, the salt draws out the moisture in the onions or the shallots, which helps break them down and sweeten them, and they cook a bit quicker. Oh, the monkfish is quite wet, isn't it? Why aren't you on the hob? Be on the hob. The squid trim, prawn heads and shells. We've had about five, ten minutes infusing into the stock with the wine, parsley, and all the juices from the clams and the mussels were strained in this pan. That's going to stay hot here, ready to go into my rice. You always want to add 
hot stock for dishes like this. It'll keep the process nice and quick while allowing to heat it up each time when you put it in the pan, get a more even cook. Monkfish coming out of the pan. More oil in with our squid. Oh, I could have done with a bit more wine to, to glaze my paella. Kush, you got any more wine? I do not have any more wine, no. Do have a bit more wine, please? Oh, wait a minute. That's me normally, isn't it? Yeah. I'll go, I'll go get you some. Drinking wine. Oh, sorry. Thank you, chef. Oh, that could be for us. This is for us. Is it? Yeah, somewhere yes. in the world there's an Ebbers cracking open a bottle of wine, so me and as well. Calamari? Why wine? <laughs> Squid coming out. How are you going, Jamie? Doing all right, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. What percentage of the way through the recipe are you? What step are you on? I'm just about to get my onion and my garlic into my paella. Getting that into there. Add tomatoes and wine. I've used two lots of wine. What? And now the card says to use the wine. Do you need more wine? Oh, no, I'll give you more wine. Uh, stir in the stock and the saffron water. Saffron water! I need to get saffron in water. Right, I'm learning from Jamie now because he's actually got the steps. So after this, I'm going to get some saffron in water. <laughs> Steeping my saffron in some water. Well, I'm going to steep some saffron in some water. <laughs> Unlike Jamie, I'm going to grind my saffron in a pestle and water and steep it in here. That way you get more surface area. You don't have to use as much. It's a bit less expensive and you get more flavour out of it. So a tiny bit in, just the water. And then a touch of hot stock. You should see this go a lovely yellowy orange colour. And that'll just sit on the side and steep while we crack on with the dish. Tomatoes in there. Chopin. Put a tiny touch of paprika and don't want to overpower the dish. Gonna take two tomatoes and grate them in. You get really nice small bits of tomato, breaks down really quickly, speeds up the cooking. Nice grated tomato. We've been blessed with some uh, Calaspara rice, which is reportedly one of the best in the world. This or Bomba, quite lucky to have this. Uh, not easily found at the supermarket, but it's got a DOP status on it. Well, I'm not gonna go into that, but yeah, DOP status, it's fantastic. This is gonna go in, but there's no measurements. So I'm gonna do about two and a half to one or three to one stock to rice. So I need to weigh that out while the sofrito cooks down and goes nice and dry and jammy. Whilst the wine's reducing in the paella pan, I'm going to strain my stock so that I know exactly what I've got. Smoky pea, doing it the dangerous way because I can't find a teaspoon. Rightly or wrongly, that is the base to our paella. Right, come in, come in, look at this. It's starting to colour, you can hear it starting to fry, starting to sizzle, nearly all the moisture's gone. And now we're going to go in with our rice, give it a stir for a minute and then add the stock. Yes, I stirred it once just to even it out, but after this I'm not going to stir it. I might shake the pan once at the beginning, but this is not a risotto, so don't stir it. So I'm going to get this up to the boil on full heat, give it 10 minutes on full, and then turn the temperature down. I'm going to set a timer to remind me when it's done. I'll need the oven because it's right here. What quantity of rice to stock does it sound here? It's all in Spanish. <laughs> Tiempo mínimo, cuestión, 16 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. Premier se fuego, fuego, tres partes de caldo de fondo por uno de arroz. Three parts water to one part rice. El complicado. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do probably three parts stock to one part rice. Oh, what a lad. Just under 800 millilitres of stock. However, that's quite a small pan. Once again, I'm going off piste, which is French, but the Spanish version. Um, and I'm not following the card because I think I want to toast my rice a little bit in the pan before I add my stock. I've got 100 grams of rice. I'm going to add in 300 grams of stock in a minute. Well, I've got saffron water. Do I need to account for the saffron water in the stock measurement? Probably do. By doing this now, I'm going to discard any shells that didn't open. Probably the muscle's dead or not good rather than putting it into your paella raw and then trying to pick them out at the end. Saving a few shells here to garnish later. How do you strain saffron water? Do you strain saffron water? Uh, I wouldn't strain saffron water, Jamie, no. 
It does sound really sarcastic. Why would you strain saffron water? The most expensive greed on earth, pretty much. More expensive than gold by weight. Put some saffron water in your mouth and taste it. Taste, taste, taste. It's so key and important. That's why I've got a massive pot of spoons by my side. I don't really like the flavour of saffron that much. Saffron water's gone in. Let's see if it's going in there. If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video. Subscribe if you aren't. Click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. All the seafood is now prepped. Got my mussels and my clams, just the meat. Got some shells for garnish later. Got my seared off monkfish that'll go in with about five minutes to go. Prawns, same, five minutes to go for these ones. And these ones will go in at the same time, about eh, six, seven minutes to go. I'll dot it all in so everything gets the right amount of time to cook. I've got a timer on taking care of the paella. We're going to open this lovely bottle of Gran Reserva 2015 Rioja to go with it. Oh, yeah? perfect. Yeah? Lovely. Salute. What's the time? 10.53. Oh. Oh, Food is... always tastes better when you have a glass of wine with that it. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Everything is bubbling away from my paella. It's now time to tackle the bit that I've been dreading, the mussels and the clams. I've added my clams and mussels to the pan with a little bit of oil, get them frying, get some heat into them. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of fish stock, chuck a bowl on top as a lid, steam them, wait for them to open up, and then I can add them on top to my paella when that's cooked. I've got some parsley, some lemon. Am I gonna add peas in? I mean, the one that I had in Valencia actually had beans in it, and that felt better. This feels even less traditional. I'm not going to use them. I'm just deciding. I'm making a, a, an executive decision. The time has gone off. I've turned the temperature right down to low. You can see, come here, come here. You can see that liquid is reduced down and it's bubbling and sizzling. I taste the rice. It's very, very, very al dente, but most of the moisture had been driven off. So I've added a couple of spoons of uh, stock just over the rice, swirled the pan just to let it cook through. Give that a minute or two, and I'm going to go in with my prawns, my squid tentacles, and then my other shellfish. Cover it with a tent of foil, just let it rest and steam through, then job done. There, it's all opened up nicely, looking good. Let's have a little, oh dear. Yeah, I need to take some of my seafood out. I've looked at Jamie's and it looks fantastic. Mine's a bit too overcrowded. I think a bit went to OTT on the seafood. I'll take it out, eat it later. Thanks, Jamie. What have I done? I'm not going to put the squid tentacles in. I'm going to sear them off for a little bit of chefy garnish. The rice is cooked. It's still quite liquidy. I like a saucy pie here. So I'm going to start adding <laughs> my seafood onto the top uh, to decorate it. And I think we're done. Last lemon. Service, please. What? We're meant to finish together. <laughs> Mine isn't done yet. I don't know if mine's done or not. Have you tasted the rice? Yeah. Have you seasoned it? Yeah. You're happy? Yeah. That's the best we can do then, right? Yeah. What if I don't want lemon on mine? Well, the pie always has lemon on it, so. Does it? Yep. All right, fine. <laughs> I've learned something. Apparently it's always got lemon on it, so I'll garnish it with some lemon. Finish it with these little pieces of squid tentacle. Here you go. Pie Whoa, mate. Yours looks amazing. Well, it's not a competition at the end of the day, is it? Not a competition. Not a competition. Not a competition. Mike said it wasn't a competition. After he lost twice. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get these into the sexies. Salud. Salud. You know, following your lead on the Spanish. You found that as hard as I found that as well, I think. Did you find that really hard? Well, it's not a dish that I cook that often because it's a lot of work, it's very expensive and it feeds a lot of people and you know, me or my lonesome, <laughs> it's not really appropriate. Should we give them a try? Let's go. Should I go mine first this time? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. The rice is really nicely flavored. Some of it's all quite dark. Mm. Mm. At least the rice are all separate grains, they're not clumped together, mm -hmm. they're not overcooked. That prawn that I just had was beautifully cooked oh, as well. One of these ones. Mm -hmm. mm. So I cooked all the shellfish separately, used the juices in the stock. Okay. Put them onto it according to cooking time at the end. 
So five, six minutes for these ones, a bit longer for these. Squid right at the last second. Monkfish was already cooked and rested, so just to steam through and warm through. Lovely. That is really nice. Oh, thanks, Jamie. That means a lot. Honestly. <laughs> I never take them seriously. Right. Should we dig into mine? Yeah. So that's what I picture in my head when going on vacation. All of your seafoods on top, or is there some of it buried in there? No, we've got squid, monkfish, and some prawns inside as well. Oh, I want to go for those then. So these prawns cooked for how long? For the full entirety of it? Yeah. So yeah, I'm worried about that bit. 25 minutes of... Yeah. Mmm! A little bit, a little bit. Very smoky. It is very smoky. How much paprika did you use? Some. I didn't think it was too much. Sokarat, see, on the outside, none. Yeah, in the middle, it's too much. Without the flames, it's actually a bit more of a hindrance. Sadly, it's pr traditionally cooked over burning wood yeah. or modern times gas, where we have these lovely Barry Taylor certified electric hobs. <laughs> and no measurement. No, I just read the back of the packet of rice in Spanish and tried to translate it. That's why you were speaking Spanish. <laughs> I thought you were just having a joke. I think that could have gone a lot worse for me. Okay. Yours, I th feel, has more balance the uh, seafood is perfectly cooked, each individual bit. Mm -hmm. And whilst that might not be the traditional way of doing it, you've added the chef element to it. And I feel like therefore yours is the better dish. I think that's the best I could do given the frying pan electric hob and lack of experience. Where you try to go traditional, obviously the first thing is the pan. But no, good game. Good game. Yeah, draw. I think I did an all right job. I think you did a better job. And I think that's the big difference. You are a chef. You know how to cook things in their own way to make them the very best. But most of us don't have a chef at home, which is exactly why we've created the Psychic app. It takes all of the thinking from a chef's brain and puts it into really simple steps that helps you plan, shop, and cook your meals, leaving you with no food waste and gets dinner on the table quickly and easily. You can try Psychic free for 30 days. Give it a go. All the links are downstairs. And if you like the video, click like, subscribe. Tell us what to cook next. Yeah, comment down below, let us know what can we cook. Strong enough. <laughs> Strong enough, a curry.